on two ends. Ground back. No special training. Just be at the fight. I'm ready to back up everything I'm saying. And I'm through talking. Summer league. Yeah. Red Bull. DeMar Johnson. Whoa! Shades of Michael Jordan. As soon as he sees it open up, he's thinking dunk. One thing I know about Smith, he will shoot, he will kick his feet, which is supposed to be illegal. And then he'll oh. down. DeMar Johnson answers back. Welcome to another episode of Alumni Talk. Um, I'm the host, Ricky Goins, who also is the uh, Vice President of Team Operations for the Alumni Basketball League, owned by Kareem Rush and Jake Jackson. Um, you can follow us at ablballing.com, also on Twitter, um, at the ABLUSA, and Instagram, at ABLballing. Our goal is to bring about alumni games um, around the country, around some of the major college basketball rivalries. Um, and also through this podcast, we bring on some um, some of the great af- uh, basketball players of all time, whether it's college pro, to discuss um, everything basketball related. Today we have a hometown legend from my side of town, my co-star from the uh, In the Water movie. <laughs> That's a joke I like that. Um, the Ma Johnson, man, it's great to have you on. Um, I thought about you when we had uh, Bernard Robinson last week. Um, and that's one of your guys, man. So just to get started, man, and I know you told your story a lot, but it's, it's always great when you tell it. Just kind of give us your um, your basketball background, how you got started, and how you kind of got on your way playing the game. Um, I got I didn't grow up playing like young, young, like Pee Wee and all that. I ain't really grew up playing until eighth, eighth and ninth grade. So how I really got on the scene is is Curtis Malone. He um, I think Kurt Smith had told Curtis Malone, I got this kid around Watts who this young guy who's good and he's not playing nowhere. And um Curtis Curtis came around Watts. I you know, went up to the car, talked to him, asked me if I wanted to play. I said, Yeah. And it was kinda of history from there. I came from from going from playing nowhere. I just stayed back at Blaisburg High School my freshman year. I never knew you I never knew you went to Blaisburg. Yeah, I went to Blaisburg, stayed back. That summer, I didn't know what direction I was going in. And then when I met Kurt, it was like history from there. I played in a few tournaments. The next day, you know, people talk about I'm going straight to the NBA. So one, one thing that I sometimes get left out of your story is you played at Parkdale High School. Yeah. Uh, with my guy, Tremaine Price and Rose. Those are my guys. So that year at Parkdale, what was that like? Um, and uh, what made you leave Parkdale and go, I think you went to Newport? Yeah, man, that was that was great because those, those my dudes, my whole family went to Parkdale. Curtis went to Parkdale. I'm from Riverdale. I mean, my mom, my mom's side Riverdale, my dad's side Northeast. That's why Kurt had met me around Watts because I, I wasn't in school in summers. I'm, I'm, I'm there a lot. So I grew up kind of like 60, 40, 70, 30 Watts in Riverdale, but I claim Riverdale. So going to, going to Parkdale, I don't know why I even went to Blaisburg. Like that year, I think the side of the street I lived on is just going to Blade. And all my friends was at Parkdale, so that ain't work out anyway. So when I got to Parkdale, we and we had a good team, like you said, both of the Tremaines, I mean Melvin, Fatty. I mean we had a, we had a good team. And, was, um, was Jamal was Jamal Brown there? No, Jamal wasn't there. Huh. Oh, okay. yeah. So so we I mean we ended up losing Northwest. Yeah, I didn't start. Um, even even though some felt you know I was probably one of the, the more talented dude on the team. I'm a six nine two, And, you know, I was coming off the bench and that summer, 
play AAU with Curtis, and with Curtis was just like, you know, we got to get you out of there. I want to, man, Delonte Hill came real close. And Delonte was going over to Newport because Coach Cheney went from Lower Baptist to Newport. And he just put me over there at Newport with Delonte and Coach Cheney. So when you got to Newport, um, I mean, that's when the the legend started. Um, and you played for Coach Cheney. Who were some of your teammates at, at um, Newport at that time? Um, me, Delonte Hill, and Audie Wells. Audie and Delonte played for Coach Cheney at, at Lower Baptist. Both of them came over from Lower And then I came in there with them. And then I had, like, some of the local guys that they already had. Team. It was just really us three that transferred over there that first year. And um, I was just, just you know, coming to be a, you know, a big deal. Delonte was already, like, mm-hmm. you know, deal with the city. He went to a championship as a sophomore at McNamara. And um, he was already, his name was already buzzing. He was one of the, the running, running for player of the year that year. And really, I was <clears throat> Batman. I was a sophomore. He He was a senior. And but but you know we just had that that relationship and and uh, playing in the to, in the DC assault together, and then him and Artie already knew each other from Lower Baptist, and you know we I don't think we won it that year. But we we won a lot of games though. We made noise. I mean Delonte Delonte built a legend of himself as a college coach. Um, you know later yeah. on and he's well yeah. known around the country for what he does. Um, he was a so, a lot of people a lot of people probably don't even. Remember and realize how good he was as a player. Oh yeah, you and see Charlotte, right? Yeah, yeah. Nah, Delonte was good. So then from Newport, you went prep. Yeah, well, two years in Newport. Um, Delonte left. I did another year at um, Newport, and then we we brought a few more guys in there. Um, because Cheney always always. Um, and we have a four six nines. I already had another year. Eric Wells. Um, Pierre Johnson came from Duval. And underrated Pierre Johnson. Oh, yeah. And 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 we had we had a we had a hell of a team over there in, in Newport. And um my for my senior year, like that summer at AAU, I was kinda wilding out a little bit. I thought dudes was trying to like test me because I had a name <laughs> and so I was kinda like trying to be like a, a tough guy. I'm throwing bowls. Every time somebody try to play me rough, I react to it. And I'm getting technicals. And so Curtis was trying to get me out of the city for my city. Yeah, go to MCI. But I was trying to stay in Newport because yeah, we was bringing in Rodney White. Damian Wilkins had transferred in there by the end of my year. Jamie Brewer, James White. We were on the team. James White probably wasn't even going to play on that team. Like, he was about to be crazy stacked with, with pros on that Newport team. But I ended up going to MCI for my senior year, which ended up being a, a real good thing for me. But at first, I wasn't trying to go. So was it at MCI that uh, you built a relationship with Bob Huggins? Or was it – that's one thing we don't really talk about with you is your recruitment. So we, it seems like the, you was at Cincinnati. So what, what was yeah. that recruitment like? Was Bob always your favorite? Or was Merlin or Georgetown ever in the picture? Or was it, it was always going to play for Bob right. Huggins? CSI. Yeah, so uh, now I'm coaching and I got to go through recruiting is so different now. I tell our coaches all the time, man, my recruitment was just was so different because it wasn't really no recruitment. Nobody ever thought I would play college. They thought I was going to come out after my junior year of high school. Right. To them. That's true. That's true. Nobody, That's right. nobody never thought I was going to play college. So nobody was recruiting me. Nobody ever talked to me. If you had if you wanted to talk to me, you had to talk to Curtis. There was no way to even get to me. Like now, how we try to get in touch with these kids all the time, texting mm-hmm. them and calling them and all that. I didn't get none of that. So there was really no recruitment. A lot of schools they didn't I'm like this dude not playing college. So then, after the McDonald's game, like already late in in, in the summer, like like before the summer was starting, when guys about to go to their schools, after that game, Jonathan Bender had like thirty. He broke like Michael Jordan record or something for McDonald's game points, and he took a lot. <clears throat> And I could have probably still came out and, and got drafted, um, top fifteen lottery. But like the people around me, Sonny Vaccaro and Curtis Malone and them dudes, Sonny was basically just like, man, this kid is too talented not to go where he deserves to go. Um, he can if he could do a year of school and get stronger. Because only thing they could say at that point was, 
my like I was like I was skinny, you know, just trying to get my get stronger basically. And you know how they tear you up and break you down. First everything became so easy. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, he not playing can't hard. Do this, he can't do that, right? It, it was really I'm not playing. I'm not playing hard. But before, when I wasn't, it's just it, it, it became easy to me. It's like no, nah, it's still it's still easy to me. It's not that I'm not playing hard, but that's just how they do. So, MCI was supposed to be like my college year. So I go to MCI and I'm playing against like D twos and JUCOs. Like we played a tough schedule. Like it wasn't on high school schedule. That was supposed to be my um, college year. Even though I went there and took care of business, killed, won the championship. And all that in the prep league, Jonathan Bender, he he just kind of took that momentum. He was 16, <clears throat> ball athletic, and he took some momentum. So we just decided to go do college for a year. So at that point, who who I was looking at was Maryland, UConn, and Cincinnati. And then I had UNC Charlotte in there just because, of, you know, Delonte was there. And Rod Rodney yeah. White, was Rodney White there? Rodney wasn't there yet. Rodney came. Rodney did a year of high school and then, then um, went to UNC Charlotte. So he wasn't there yet. But um, one of my college, one of my teammates, at MCI, Demar Brown, went to went to um, UNC Charlotte though. So when Hugs came in and spoke to me, really, I didn't take no other visits nowhere. When Hugs came and spoke to me, everything he said was was really, you know, what I was trying to hear, and. So it was. I just was like, well, I'm going to Cincinnati. I mean, you got there, man. It was it was you, Kenya Martin, and with Steve Logan. Steve Logan was a sophomore. Me and Kenny Satterfield came in both as McDonald's All American freshmen. Now let, let me ask you this: And when we talk about like uh, a one and done type, because these a lot of these kids go to college now one and done. But during your time, if you felt like you were a pro, you just went pro. So what was your mindset yeah. in college? Um, was it to win a national championship or was it just to improve your job, dr uh, draft stock or was it both? Both. Because, I mean, I, I never lost before. I always won. I mean, I won all the top tournaments at AAU. Um, I, I, I won my championship at MCI. Like, everywhere I, I go, I was winning. I didn't want to. I could have went to <laughs> shop somewhere else to a team that wasn't as good. And and put up big freshman numbers like you know, like some of the freshmen from the area. You, you know, Mike put up monster numbers as freshmen. I could have went somewhere and, and probably put up big numbers, but I knew how good we'd be in, in Cincinnati. I'm like, man, they got pieces in place, and all they got to do is put a two guard like me on that team that they already got. We had a chance to win it, and you know, we was number one for most of the year, and we probably should have won it if if Kmart ain't, ain't break his foot. Yeah, no, you guys had a you guys had an amazing team, man. I I remember that. And I think Steve Logan actually came back and ended up being like, because he was a sophomore, right? Sophomore, he ended up coming so he, back, and he was the first team All American in two thousand two, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, like Steve. Steve got all kind of records up here, you know. He, yeah, he's, he's a great he's a great player. Yeah. So so now it's time to think about the NBA and you know the, the college is over. Um, where did you see yourself getting – what kind of preparation did you put in for the draft, number one? Was it a situation where you knew you was going high, you was, you was you know, just staying healthy? Were you trying to prove your stock? Like what was – leading up to getting drafted that night, what was? What did your process look like? Okay, so that, that process started when I was a sophomore. Once I got with Curtis and I, I put it one summer in, and, <laughs> and I guess they seen, you know, six nine guy playing the guard and dunking and shooting threes and all that stuff. I guess that was kind of rare at that point. So after the buzz got high, Curtis stopped putting me. I was training with Mike Brown, who was, who was an um, assistant under Bernie Bickerstaff at that time. Me, me, him, and J.B. Bickerstaff, his son, who was NBA coach. Now, we were, we were doing workouts like when I was like a sophomore, junior. I'm going to see weight trainers. I'm preparing for the NBA in high school. When I got to Cincinnati, it was just about – you know, if I first of all, the the coach I played for MCI was was crazy as hugs. <laughs> you know, if, if I'm going to Cincinnati, you know, because all them dudes up there was eating weights, and you know, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to play hard because I'm playing for Huggins. And it was crazy as Max Good. Max Good was my coach at MCI. He actually made it easier to play for hugs because he was probably more crazier than hugs. And I was in Pittsfield, Maine. So if if they saying about me is I got to get stronger. 
and I got to play hard. Going to Cincinnati already, you know, checks that checks them boxes just because I, I ain't got no choice up there but to play that way. Um, the measurables and the skill set was already there. So it wasn't even about the numbers I put up. I was just trying to win games. I would probably had to average 0. 0.0 to to not get drafted. Like so I averaged almost 13 points my freshman year and I knew I knew I wouldn't go past 9 basically. And I think Houston had a night pick Steven that was over there. And um I, I always wanted to go to Houston cuz you know Rudy was letting Steven Moochie and Cat just iso. Get it, get it like, done. <laughs> play out the side and just iso. That's how we grew up playing. Um but I mean, after my work for Orlando twice, I worked out for Orlando twice. I, I didn't think I would go past six. I just didn't know if Orlando would take me at five or or if I go to Orlando at six and Orlando took Mike Miller. Man, that's, and so now you're in the NBA. Um, just talk about, like, your NBA your NBA journey, just, you know, and, and how, how you view your NBA journey over the course of your career. Right. It was kind of it was it was real rocky. Um, so when I got to the Hawks, um, their their plan for me was to bring me along slowly, kind of like, cause, cause I was like like Sonny Vaccaro was a big dude in Adidas at that time, right? And he had Kobe and Tracy, and then I was supposed to be like his next guy on that trajectory. And you know, remember Kobe ain't coming starting. Kobe was coming off the bench. Kobe had to work his way in. Tracy ain't played for a few years. And then he he, he played his last year, then went to Orlando and went crazy. So, you know, they seen how that worked for them guys. Their plan was to bring me along slowly. So my rookie year, and I didn't like the plan at all. You know, I wasn't like, it ain't like I had all-stars playing in front of me. <clears throat> I got to Atlanta. Jim Jackson was the two guard, and he had a great career. And um, I, I, I understood that for sure. But then Jim got traded midway through that year and I'm still like I'll play some games I get some highlights then I won't play then I'll play again I'll get some highlight I like on our top 10 highlights for my rookie year, I'm on like five of them and I I ain't barely even played that much so I'm playing this first they trying to bring me along my second year it um I started off the season I ain't played I ain't played much at all early because coach was upset with me because he wanted me to stay in the land all summer and work out. But my agent had it set up for the LA. Everybody's in LA working out all the pros, all the all-stars and I'm out there getting two or three, two and three a days there. So he just, he don't see me in Atlanta. So he figure I ain't working. So he mad at me when I come back to Atlanta, he, he, he benched me early. And then by, I started starting, I started the rest of the, the year. So, the second half of my second year it was when it was like no looking back. I was the starter. We won we won a lot of games that second half of the year. We um we traded got Sharif Abdul Rahim. Um and my third year was supposed to be that year I take off. And that's when I had my car accident like two weeks before training camp in my third year. I stayed in Atlanta the whole summer. I worked out with Coach Long Kruger and that's that's supposed to be my breakout year. And that's when I broke my neck. And then that's when I had to kind of fight my way back to get into the league. And then it was, it was minimum after minimum. And, um, but you know, it could have been worse. I could have been dead. I could have not been able to play. And when I got to Denver, the first one back to the Knicks. And, um, when I, when I was with the Knicks, we ended up going to the playoffs. I thought it was great. I thought I'd sign back with him. Um, man, my, my rookie Mike Sweetney from home was out there. Uchi was on that team, um, but they they ended up not signing me back, which was a blessing because when Kenyon ended up signing to Max in Denver, I got a chance to go out to Denver, and 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 that that worked out great for me. So and I, I I always remember this. I was talking to Oral about this the other day. Was how I remember like 2011 down Verizon Center. You was playing a lot of pickup with the Wizards at the time. Mm-hmm. I remember me and my father went down there one day specifically, man, and I, like Chris Paul was down there, and all them guys, man, and you were just so different on the court. I I, I was sitting there, I said to my father, I was like, man, like, there's no way they're not going to sign him. Like, he's the best player in the gym, and there's, like, all-stars. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it just shows, man, how, like, your level of talent was just different. 
it's just that, you know, circumstances go how they go. But, I, you know, for me, you're probably the most talented guy to come through my area. You know, and that, that just was – you were going to go to the NBA. <laughs> like, it was, you know what I mean? Like, only thing that could have stopped you from being an all-star is what happened. You know what I mean? Right. But I got I got two more questions for you. Um, number one was at Cincinnati, when you what was the game like against Xavier? Like what made that rivalry? I, I'm, I'm assuming y'all played when you was there. What made that rivalry special? I didn't understand it my <clears throat> first year here. I mean, I'm a freshman. I'm not from Cincinnati. I don't know. For, to me, it was just another game on the schedule, and they just was a school that was close. Because we already beat North Carolina. We already beat Iowa State. We already, like, I'm thinking we're not going to lose a game the whole year. So we we lost to, our first loss was to Xavier at his that year. We were the number one team in the country. And we went to Xavier with five NBA players, basically, and lost. And um, I, and I and then after that game, I realized, like, this fan stormed on the floor. And... I realized how serious the rivalry was because I didn't know at that time. And when I came back as a as a coach, when I came back to finish school, is when I really felt it the most. Like, man, we we hate these dudes. <laughs> the city, I wasn't. I was young. I, I was on campus. I wasn't around the city like it is now. Like you can just like the the hate up up here is like crazy because Xavier is a small school, and in Cincinnati, it's like probably ninety five percent of the people hate Xavier. But then Xavier got that that five percent that's that's loyal and they loud and they, you know, game time they you know you 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 gonna be presence. But most of the city, like you walk around somebody, you go downtown, so you got a Xavier shirt on. People gonna look at you like, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, my, <laughs> they, my, 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 no, Xavier. Uh, it's, it's, it's just different. It's just it's it's it's, 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 it's rigid. It's rigid. They miles away. And they and they do a good job over there. They got a good basketball program. We just hate them so much. Like the games are, the game's so intense, man. So my last question for you. So we approach this. You know, the, the subject of DC basketball can be a very sensitive topic, right? We see it on Facebook yeah. every day, right? Yeah. So I want to ask you a little different question than I asked uh, Bernard. You probably heard. If you had to yeah. name three people from the area that influenced your game that you looked at and said, "I saw them." And part of me watching yeah. them, because when people think about like KD, if sometimes people don't make that connection for this area we do of how much he influenced, he, whether he how much he watched or not, you you are he's like the evolution of you, right? So who who did you watch the game kind of like impacted you? And you say I want to take this from him, and I feel like I can do what he did from my area. That's, that's a good question because I ain't, I ain't never been asked that question. Um, it's it's. It's so many people, right? And I, that my game, because I grew up with, I'm, I'm going to go off, then I'm going to get back to your question. Because it's, <laughs> it's a lot, because I grew up a Jordan fan. I tried to do all the things Jordan did, mm -hmm. and but also love Magic, also love Iceman. I took so much from so many players. I took stuff from guys around Riverdale who, who, who never even played much in high school, right? Mm -hmm. But to answer that question, the guys who – who I looked up to the most from our area that I watch that probably helped my game on a lot is um Walt Williams. Um Lawrence Moulton. Um and probably like Randolph Childress. Like mm. those I mean, I'm playing with these dudes on video games. I'm watching them on <clears throat> TV. And I never thought that I would even like when I used to see dudes, on, like I, I see Kurt Smith and them around the way, and them dudes were like gods to me. But like, like them dudes that I seen on TV, like that's on video games, they wasn't even real to me. I ain't never think that I would have a chance to even see these dudes in person. You know what I'm saying? I wore the long socks and the headband and all that. So Randolph Childress, man, making Jeff McGinnis fall. <laughs> I grew up with no kind of fan, and them, them dudes, them dudes are the ones from home that. I seen on TV and that I thought was like, yeah, I wish I can do that. I didn't realize Grant Hill was even from home. Like I watched, yes, I didn't realize he was from home and, until like, I, until I got older for real. Yes, sir, man. He, he came, you know, he came on my prior show, the Red Cup, man. He, 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 he loves it. He loves being from this area. So yeah. before we go, just what, what are you working on, man? Like I know your coach, like what do you have going on? You want to tell people about, we can support you with um, in your current, current role right now. 
Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm on the staff at my school, my alma mater, the University of Cincinnati. I'm the director of player development. Um, we're just trying to get this thing back to how it was when, when, when I was here, when we was new for most of the year. We're going into the Big 12 next year. So, you know, just trying to, trying to, you know, get some players in here, trying to coach them up, trying to help them kids get to where I've been and, you know, trying to represent my school. Appreciate having you, man. Thanks again. Thank you guys for joining this uh, latest episode of ABL Baller. I mean, uh, <laughs> alumni talk. Make sure you follow our website, ablballer.com, Twitter, uh, at, US, uh, at the ABL USA, and on Instagram, um, ABL Baller. Also, this show will be on Apple Podcasts as well as YouTube. So thanks for your support, guys, and we'll be back another episode.